and welcome to the session in which we would look at the effective interest amortization method. This topic is important whether you are taking the CPA exam or you are an accounting student. Financial accounting, intermediate accounting, the CPA exam for, they all cover this effective interest amortization method. The amortization method will help you find the book value or the carrying value of the bond. That's important because when you retire a bond, you need to determine where it, where, whether they have a gain or a loss. So it's important to do that. So whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate, I strongly suggest you take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. You keep your CPA review course. I'm a useful addition to your CPA review course. I add value. I add knowledge, which in turn will help you prepare for your CPA exam. Your risk is one month of subscription. My material is organized to align with your CPA review course, so it's easy to follow. Your potential return is passing the exam. And if not for, for anything, take a look at my website to find out how well or not well your university doing on the CPA exam. I do have resources for other accounting courses. This is my course catalog various accounting courses, intermediate, financial, advanced, tax, cost. My CPA review courses are designed to align with your CPA review course, whether it's Becker, Roger, Gleam, Wiley. And I do have all the previously AI CPA release questions for the past 10 years, the multiple choice section. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Like this recording, take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation, connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. So the effective interest rate method is very important and very common on the CPA exam. So let's take a look at an example to illustrate this concept. Okay. Now, on December 31st, 2022, Adam Company issues a $100,000 par value bond, a two-year bond for 96.4 to yield 10.031. The stated rate is 8%. The bond pays interest on June 30th and December 31st. First, let's make sure we understand what we are giving. Adam Company tried to raise money. They wanted to borrow 100,000. They're offering 8% interest semi-annually. They sold the bond, which is, this is the price of the sale at a discount at 96.4. Now, if you don't know how we compute this price, 96.4, I have a separate recording, how to price a bond. But in this session, I'm going to assume you know it. Even if you don't know it, you don't have to know it. But if you want to know it, view my how to compute the price of a bond. The bond to yield 10.03%. It means this is the market rate for similar bonds. And that's why the bond sold at a discount because they're offering 8 and the market is 10.03. Let's real quick go ahead and journalize this entry. The company would receive cash of $96,000. $400 and that's taking the face value of the bond times the price 96.4%. The company will credit bonds payable for 100,000. You will always credit and debit the bonds payable for face value. And as I told you, there's a discount and the discount is the difference of 3,600. Now this is the amount that we need to take care of to amortize this discount. What is a discount? Discount is a contra liability. Discount is the interest that the company kind of paid up front, okay? Because they could not get the 100,000, they, they paid a discount in a sense that they get less money. So rather than getting 100,000, notice they got 96,400. So the difference is that kind of prepayment of interest, but we cannot call it interest, we're gonna call it discount and we're gonna amortize it, spread it out over the life of the bond. So every time we make an interest payment, we're gonna chop some of that payment, some of that 3,600, chop it in a sense, turn it into an expense, specifically interest expense. Now there's two methods to do that. You can take this 3,600 and spread it over four period. And the reason I say over four period, because it's a two year bond paying interest semi-annually, which is four periods. That's one way to do it. Or we can charge the interest, which is the proper way, using the effective interest rate method, the method that we will see today. What does that mean? It's based on the carrying value of the bond. So let's take a look at this, what we are, what we just said and try to illustrate this because it will be easier to explain. So when we start the bond, when we issued the bond, the bond carrying value is 96,400. So what is the bond carrying value? The bond carrying value is the face value minus any unamortized discount. 
So when we issued the bond, we had an amortized discount of 3,600. Therefore, the bond carrying value is 96,400. And this is when we issued the bond. Now notice we have a column for cash interest paid, column for bond interest expense, column for discount amortization, column for the unamortized discount, and column for the carrying value. So I'll explain what goes into each column separately, and then you'll be fine. You'll be, you'll be fine. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna compute, show you how to compute the cash interest paid. So six months later, we're gonna have to make a payment. Well, the cash interest paid is the face value of the bond times the stated rate times one half. Why one half? Because the bond pays interest semi-annually and that's equal to 4,000. This is the cash payment. The cash payment, so the company will have to pay 4,000. Now this 4,000, you'll see it would repeat over the next four periods. So the cash payment will never change. That's easy. Now we need to compute our bond interest expense. How do we compute the bond interest expense? We're going to take the carrying value of the bond, which is the carrying value of the bond at the beginning of the period is 96,400 multiplied by the market rate, by the market rate, 10.031%, also times one half because we're converting everything one half. And that's going to give us 835. And that's you, I'm sorry, 4,000. 4,835 and that's your bond interest expense. So notice your bond interest expense is higher than your cash. Your bond interest expense is 835,000 higher than your cash. You might be asking, Would that, does that make sense? And the answer is yes, it will make sense. Remember what I told you at the beginning. I told you that this 3,600, it's gonna turn into interest expense. So this 3,600, I'm now converting some of it into interest expense. How much did I convert? The difference between what I paid in cash and what, what my bond interest expense is, so the difference between those two is 835. This is how much I converted this period. Therefore, my interest expense is my $4,000 in cash plus the 835 of discount. So 4,835. Now, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep track of, of my unamortized amount. So if I, I had 3,600, I deducted from it 8,000, 835, what's left is 2,765. Now my carrying value will go up. Why my carrying value will go up? Because now my face value is still 100,000. My unamortized is 2,765. Therefore, my book value is 97,235. Okay, so this is where all these figures are coming from. Now, let me show you now the journal entry for the interest. The journal entry is I will debit bond interest expense 4,835, 4, credit my cash 4,000, credit my discount 835. So simply put, my interest expense is 4,000 in cash, 835 in discount, together give me 4,385. Okay, now let's take a look at six months later. Six months later, the same thing will happen. Cash will stay the same. My interest expense is my previous period, bond carrying value times 10.013 times one half. The difference between those two is the amount I amortize. Then the unamortized discount, now it goes down to 1,887 because I reduced it by 877. My carrying value goes up to 98,112 because I have less of an amortized discount. So notice here, what I want to show you is your interest expense went up. Your interest expense went up. You might be asking, does that make sense and why? And the answer, yes, it makes sense. Why? Because your, carry, your interest expense is a function of your carrying value. Your carrying value also going up. It went from 96,400 to 97,235. Therefore, your interest expense goes up because you're computing your interest expense based on the carrying value. The third payment, June 30th, 2024, the cash is the same. Your bond interest expense again went up. You took 98,112 times 10.031 times one half. Your, the difference between the cash and the interest expense is the amount that you amortize. Therefore, you would reduce 1888 by 920 one will give you 967. Again, your discount, the carrying amount goes up because your unamortized discount is going down. And you make the last payment. Again, the same concept. Eventually, the key is to get rid of the unamortized discount. And eventually, when the bond mature, which is 1231, 2024, this is when we, the bond mature, it will go back to the carry, to the par value or to the maturity 
value. So this is how we amortize a discounted bond. This is how we amortize a discounted bond. A few things I want you to take away from this uh, from this table. The cash is always the same. Bond interest expense goes up. Okay. An amortized discount, of course, goes down to zero and bond carrying value goes up goes up means I know I'm, I'm looking at this I'm putting the arrow up but it goes up in a sense it goes up to the maturity value it was at 96,400 it went up to 100,000 you have to get rid of the discount and the bond interest expense goes up every period okay in other words you are amortizing more every period now let's take a look at a premium bond on December 31st Adam company issue 100,000 par value bond for 10306 premium bond to yield 9.9702 the stated rate is 12% you know we're offering more than the market rate we're going to sell the bond at a premium so we're going to debit cash 103600 we're going to credit the bonds payable at at face value and the difference is a premium of 3600 same concept now we're going to take this premium and amortize it against interest expense so the premium reduces your interest expense in the prior example when we looked at the bond discount we said the discount increases your interest expense the premium is exactly the opposite because you received more money up front the premium it's going to reduce your interest expense how are we going to amortize this let's start with the same concept carrying value what's the carrying value it's the face value plus plus not minus plus any unamortized discounts would happen to be 3600 therefore you're starting a carrying value of 103600 now you're gonna make you're gonna make the first payment the first payment is 6000 and the payment will always stay the same which is your carry a face value times stated rate times one half which is six thousand so you could just on the cpa exam once you know the cash payment fill out the cash payment so you get your points for that same concept for computing your bond interest expense it's your carrying value from the previous period or at the beginning of the period times the market rate which is 103600 times 0 0.099702 will give us 5165 notice your interest expense is lower than your cash why because the premium reduces your interest expense because you received more money up front it's going to reduce your interest expense the difference between those two gives you the premium amortized now since you amortize 835 you're going to reduce it from 3600 you're going to have 2750 left your carrying value goes down because in a premium bond it's above face value it's going to go down to face value the journal entry is debit bond interest expense 5165 credit cash notice you paid more than interest expense you paid more than interest expense your interest expense is lower then you start to amortize the premium then the same concept would repeat itself the cash is the same interest expense is the carrying value times the market rate the difference is the premium amortize then your unamortized premium goes down and your carrying value goes down then the process repeat itself and as a result what's going to happen again your bond carrying value goes down to 100,000 your interest expense period after period goes down why because your bond carrying value is going down this stays the same and eventually your premium goes down to zero so this is how we amortize a premium bond at the end of this recording i'm going to remind you whether you are an accounting student or a cpa candidate take a look at my material if you're interested in investing in your career in your cpa in your accounting courses i don't replace your cpa review course i'm a supplemental material i can help you improve your grade to pass the exam to move on with your life to have a career good luck study hard stay safe accounting is worth it